To replace your clutch, you're going to have to safely lift and support the vehicle along with remove the transmission and several other things. Please follow the link provided at the end of this video for additional assistance with those tasks. Here is what your engine will look like after you have removed the transmission. Shown here is the pressure plate, blue arrow. There is a jack stand underneath the engine supporting the weight that is normally supported by the transmission. Attach your flywheel lock and constrain the flywheel in position as you remove the flywheel bolts. With the flywheel off, remove the flywheel seal. Using a screwdriver, puncture and remove the seal, being careful not to damage any of the side surfaces where the seal mates to the engine case. This is only if you are replacing the rear main seal. If yours is fine and you just want to replace the clutch, you can skip this step. Make sure you have gathered all the required parts for the job before you begin. Here is a picture of Pelican Parts Clutch Super Kit. It contains everything that you need to replace your clutch. Shown here is a lightened flywheel. The main advantage to using a lighter weight flywheel is that it reduces the weight of the rotational elements in the engine. However, the installation of a lightened flywheel may make the car difficult to drive, particularly in stop and go traffic. In addition, if you install a lightened flywheel, make sure that you install a spring clutch disc along with it. Insert photo. Don't use the stock clutch disc. If you use the stock clutch disc, there will be nothing to absorb the driveline shock and vibrations, and you might damage your engine or cause the engine to trigger fault misfires. This photo shows the transmission main shaft with a throw-out bearing guide attached, blue arrow, and the pivot ball pin, red arrow. Pluck the old seal out of the transmission bore and tap in a new one. There's an insert picture of the guide and seal. The insert picture shows the throwout fork and it is attached to one end with a small metal clip, yellow arrow. Remove the fork from the transmission by pulling on the fork and unhooking the clip from its catch on the bottom. Clean the entire assembly, then lubricate everything with white lithium grease, including the throwout bearing guide tube, green arrow. Make sure that the parts are correctly assembled as per the photo. The throwout bearing clips onto the throwout arm as shown in the insert photo. Pay special attention to the orientation of the pivot piece and pin indicated by the red arrow. If your backup lamp switch is giving you trouble, now is the perfect time to replace it. The switch is located on the end of the transmission near the rubber mount. Replacement is as simple as removing it from the top of the transmission case and installing a new one indicated by the blue arrow. Shown here is the infamous intermediate shaft bearing that was responsible for so many problems with 996 and Boxster motors. If you've got everything apart to this point, you should really consider replacing the bearing if it hasn't been done by a previous owner. Image A shows the pilot bearing and the pilot bearing holds the transmission input shaft in place and aligns the transmission up with the crankshaft. Image B, to remove the flywheel pilot bearing, use an appropriately sized socket and gently tap with a hammer. Image C, the new bearing should fit easily into the hole in the crankshaft. Image D, use a deep socket to evenly tap in the bearing so it's flush with the surface of the flywheel. Take your new flywheel seal and coat it with a light touch of Curl T. Then install it onto the engine, tapping lightly around the edge. The newer style seal is supposed to seat about 14 millimeters or so below the end of the crankshaft. This means that the seal will sit about 3 millimeters or so recessed beyond the edge of the case. Yellow arrow. There is a special Porsche tool designed for the installation of this seal but I simply made my own using some plastic pipe from the local hardware store that was the same diameter as the seal. Tap lightly and carefully. Make sure that the seal doesn't become caulked in its bore. Clean up any leftover sealant that squeezes out. I use a simple flywheel lock that is basically a strip of metal with two large slots in it. Arrow right. This allows you to attach the lock to the bolt affixed to the engine case and one affixed to the flywheel. 
where the pressure plates bolts would normally mount. This inexpensive lock works great on almost any car. With the lock in place, torque the bolts working in a crisscross pattern. When tightening the flywheel fasteners, use the manufactured supplied torque specifications and follow the tightening sequence and steps precisely. The fasteners are torqued to yield and require multi-step tightening process. Shown here is a simple degree wheel that I made for tightening flywheel bolts. Download and print out the wheel on a thick piece of paper, then get some 3M tack adhesive, spray it on the back so it sticks to the flywheel like a post-it note. Then crank each bolt 120 degrees clockwise to achieve the proper tightness stretch of the flywheel bolts. You can download and print out the template by following the link provided at the end of this video. The clutch alignment tool, green arrow, is used to align the clutch disc, red arrow, with the pilot bearing, pressure plate, and the flywheel. Without the alignment tool, blue arrow, it would be nearly impossible to insert the transmission input shaft into the pilot bearing when mating the engine and transmission back together. When the pressure plate bolts are all tightened down, which are done in a crisscross fashion and torqued to the spec of the plate you bought, you should be able to easily pull out the alignment tool and the pressure plate and clutch disc should be centered with respect to the pilot bearing. I recommend using all new hardware when performing a clutch replacement. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.